Strangleweed, Devil's Guts, Witch's Shoelaces. These sinister nicknames are fitting for a plant that chokes and sucks the life from its unsuspecting victims. If plants could dream, this parasitic vine-like vampire would certainly be their nightmare fuel. This is the daughter. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. Today we're talking about Cascutta, commonly known as daughters, and even more commonly known as the anaconda of the plant world. Okay, it's not really called that, I just made that up. But maybe after today's video, we'll call it that. Let's see. Before we continue, I'd like to thank Nature on PBS for sponsoring this video. PBS's Nature series is going into its 40th season, and the premiere episode, My Garden of a Thousand Bees, is premiering on October 20th. Congratulations on 40 seasons. This special episode features Martin Dorn, a veteran wildlife camera operator and bee enthusiast who embarked on a special challenge during the lockdown in 2020. Martin set out to film all the bees he could find in his tiny urban garden in Bristol, England. After shooting more than 700 hours of footage, Martin has captured some of the most detailed footage of bees, showcasing their behavior and distinct personalities. He's caught everything from different species of bees competing over territory in the garden to one busy bee building a nest with a shell and hundreds of sticks. Martin's fascination led him to name one particular bee, Nikki, and documents her highly intelligent behavior at her level as she leaves a lasting impression on him and the garden. You can watch the premiere episode of Nature on October 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern at pbs.org nature and on the PBS video app. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Nature. This genus of around 170 species of parasitic plants can sniff out their victims before strangling them and sucking their life force. The evil cousin of the Convolvulaceae family of beautiful morning glories, the daughter is one relative you don't want to tangle with. Most species of daughter have completely lost the ability to photosynthesize, lacking the chlorophyll that typically makes plants green and is responsible for turning sunlight into energy. That's why daughters appear in a variety of non-green hues, like yellow, orange, pink, and brown. And that's also why they need to sap off their hosts for energy, since they can't produce enough of their own. The process of how a daughter goes from seed to energy vampire is a choreographed dance that requires perfect timing. Daughters begin as independent little seedlings, germinating in the ground with their own roots in the spring and summer. They emerge as leafless stems, which lasso counterclockwise until they find the helpless stem of a host to wrap themselves around, at which point their own roots die off. Due to their basic AF in-house food production system, if these plants, which are definitely Team Edward, can't reach a host within three to five days, the seedlings will wither and die. If they do manage to wrap their deadly tendrils around the closest host, they first cement themselves to the plant with a layer of pectin, a type of carbohydrate that works as a binding agent. You're probably no stranger to pectin. You might have even had some this morning on your toast. It's the same stuff that makes jam and jelly deliciously gelatinous. Within a few days of gluing itself to the host, the daughter's own roots die, and it sprouts hostoria, root-like structures that penetrate the host's stem and start sucking its juices. I told you, the daughter is a fang-wielding vampire. Scientists have long wondered how the daughter locates its hosts. To add the bloody cherry on top of this cake of horrors, researchers at Penn State University determined that daughters can actually sniff out the chemical signals of their victims. And daughters have very discerning taste. They can tell plants apart based on their scent and will grow towards their faves. I guess it's kind of like standing in a food court and letting your nose guide you to the closest burrito stand. Once attached to their host, these Dracula wannabes spread at an alarming rate, growing about seven centimeters a day. Daughter can completely blanket an area of three meters square in a single growth season. That's bigger than a double bed. A daughter is an insatiable creature. Once established, it branches out to other surrounding plants to start sucking off of them too, making a thick mat of tangled, choking vines. And to add injury to injury, the daughter can actually transmit viruses from one host to another. 
They're basically nature's super spreader event. To complete its deadly life cycle, the daughter flowers. These cream-colored, bell-shaped blooms usually appear in clusters and produce two to three seeds each. One species of daughter, Cascada australis, picks up on protein signals from the host plant to initiate flowering. The synchronized flowering ultimately helps the daughter flowers attract more pollinators, therefore ensuring its continued success. Daughter seeds can stay dormant in the ground for five, 10, up to 30 years, depending on conditions. That level of immortality is something only a vamp can truly understand. Resistance against the deadly daughter may seem futile, but some plants have actually evolved to elude the daughter's deadly embrace. Some mallows, like the upland cotton and the Hawaiian hibiscus, both form a type of wound tissue that prevents the daughter's haustoria from penetrating its stems. This is the stake in its heart. With no energy to suck, this daughter is dusted. Daughter only spreads by seed, so stopping them from going to seed is a great first step towards preventing future outbreaks. Extra precautions have to be taken when working in areas with daughter infestations. Clothing and equipment should be cleaned thoroughly to prevent spread. Because by the time you notice it spread to your area, you're already dead. Well, if you're a plant, of course. So, what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Most species of daughter have completely lost the ability to fly. Wow. Why? <laughs> let's do, do, do it again. You're probably, okay, let's take it down a notch, Tasha. Jesus. You're probably no stranger to pectin. You might have even had some on your toast this morning. Ew. <gasps> What's up? Like, calm down. You're probably no stranger to pectin. It's even in stuff in, that you eat. I told you, the daughter was a fang-wielding maniac! <laughs> like that? Is that what they're looking for? Exactly what they want. What did I tell you? I told you, the fodder is the dawn-wielding song we got. <laughs> okay. I told you, didn't I?